I want to spend just a couple quick minutes going through an overview of the Dreamweaver interface. Now I'm currently using Dreamweaver CS 5.5. In Dreamweaver CS 4, there was a major interface change and that stayed consistent through CS 6. Now the latest, the Creative Cloud, has made some additional changes, but we're not going to be looking at those. So the first thing you're going to do is set up a layout mode for Dreamweaver. And when you first run Dreamweaver, it'll give you an option. If you don't like that option, you can always make a change. Simply up at the top, where you see the option you selected, click on the drop down box. And now you can do something like App Developer, or you can switch to Coder, Designer. If you have a dual screen format, or if you want a compact format, or you can go back and choose your own. You'll notice that Designer and Classic look very familiar, and that's because Dreamweaver was originally designed specifically and mainly for web designers who didn't have to do much with the HTML code. Once you load up Dreamweaver, you'll see your welcome screen. And your welcome screen was broken down to three main parts. First is a list of recent files, if you have files that you've opened recently. The second is a place to create brand new files. And then third is a list of videos that Adobe has created to help you learn their product. If you want to open up a file, all you need to do is simply click on a link of your recent files, and it'll open up in one of the tabs. Additionally, if you want to create a brand new file, all you need to do is click on the appropriate file. Now right now, my HTML window is in code view. I have three different ways to view it. I can view it as code, where I see all my HTML tags. I can view it in design view, where I only see the output of my design. And I can look in split view, which will put the two items side by side. Additionally, you can go up to file and click new. And by default, you'll probably be on a blank page. From your blank page, you have a list of different file types and you have a list of layouts that you can choose from. Now starting in Dreamweaver CS4, they gave some examples of layouts that you could use. However, I generally don't recommend that you use these as they're a little bit harder to work with, especially if you're just starting out. When you want to create it, you simply click on the Create button. Adobe Dreamweaver, like many of the Adobe Creative products, uses a system of panels to give you options of creating, inserting, and modifying your different content. You'll usually see your CSS styles panel over on the far right hand side. And this is going to give you a list of all your styles that you've created to define how your web page looks. Down below, you'll probably have your files panel. This is a list of all the files that are set up in your site definition and we'll look at how to set up a Dreamweaver site later. You have your property inspector, also sometimes referred to as your property panel. And this happens to be a context sensitive panel. And what that means is depending upon what you have selected, it will change to show you the appropriate properties for that selected tag. Like most applications, up at the top you will have your menu bar. This is a list of all your drop down menus that you can use. You will also have your document toolbar. Now this sits just above your document, below the tabs that specify what file you're working on. And it's specific to that page document. It has things such as how you can view your page, if you want to look in live view, upload it, view it in a multi-screen environment, and change your page title. You can see that as I change my title, my document toolbar, it changes the title tag for us in our web page. This changes what will display in the top of our browser. Now in between our menu and our document toolbar, I have placed my insert panel. My insert panel is used to simply and easily insert different items into a web page. For example, I can easily click on a table, specify how many rows and columns, click OK, and I have a table. I can click on the image icon and it'll ask for me to go find an image that I can use to import into my web page. I have a variety of different tabs to insert different types of elements 
into my web page. Most people don't have the insert panel across the top bar like I do. That's because you can move any of your panels to a place that's going to be more convenient for you. If you notice your little dots off on the far left hand side, you can click and drag. And it highlights and puts that little blue line, it puts it in a different panel. I can click and drag, and if I put it over another tab, I wind up creating what they refer to as a panel group. That's where I have more than one panel that I have to tab between. I personally like having my insert bar across the top as it keeps it the smallest and easiest to see all of my elements that I need. If I want to close a panel group, I can simply double click on a tab and that will shrink it. Or if I want to completely close it, I can go off to the far side, look at the little drop down box and choose to close my tab group. And that completely removes the group from my working space.